Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, I did a debugging video a few weeks back and I got a lot of positive reinforcement from it. So we're doing another one. Uh, this one is going to go over a weirdness that I encountered with Perl and XDG directories in Docker. Uh, we debugged this on stream for Pregment CI recently so that I could have Perl support there. Um, I don't know much about Perl, but I figured out a bunch along the way in order to get this working. I wanted to show you kind of the thought process and how I walked through that and the stuff that I learned along the way. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so I have set up a separate example from the real one, mostly because the pre-commit CI Docker file is very, very large. And so I wanted something smaller and simpler and self-contained such that I could show you the problem and then show you how I ultimately worked around the issue. Okay, so I started by installing some packages. Uh, we're of course gonna be installing Perl. Perl has a package manager called CPAN, uh, and we're gonna be using that to try and install things into a separate specific directory. Uh, that's kind of how Pregamit works. It installs tools in isolated directories such that they don't interfere with your system. Uh, we also need make because one of the dependencies needs make to install. Uh, we're gonna clone from git, so we need git and CA certificates, and we're gonna poke around with a bad text editor. <laughs> Um, called Nano. And it's not a bad text editor, it's fine. I used to use Nano, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we want to force a specific XDG configuration because we're installing as an unprivileged user. Specifically, I'm going to be installing as user 1001, uh, which is a made up user that doesn't exist. And I want to configure where its data and configuration come from. So I'm setting these specific XDG. Uh, configuration values. Now normally they will be inside the home directory, but we're forcing them to specific locations that should be writable by this user. I've also configured Perl such that it's going to install things into this temp target directory. This is similar to what Precommit does, though we're hard coding a specific target here rather than one of Precommit's environment directory. And this part isn't important, but that's how you do it in Perl apparently. Uh, the last part of this is uh, the thing that we're going to try and install, which is this latex indent.pl, and we're going to clone a copy of that in a temp source. All right, so that gives us what we need in order to reproduce this problem. Let's start by Docker building this, or podman, because that's what I'm using. Podman build dash t curl example dot. Uh, it's cached because I pre built it before this, and we're going to run the reproduction that we had before. Now notice I'm going to be using some like mounting and working directories. This is just to better replicate how the actual Docker image was running. Um, there's a reproduction without it, but it's easiest to do it this way and explain it that way. So we're going to do podman run rm, that way we don't delete the container afterwards, ti. We're going to mount our working directory as our source directory. We're going to do that read only because we don't really want it to write to our host. And we're going to set our work dir to slash source, and then we're going to run bash. Uh, this simulates kind of how pre-commit builds these. Uh, oh, we need our actual image uh, Perl example. All right, cool. So now we are inside the container. We are at uh, user ID 1001. We are in our home directory, and we want to install this uh, temp source Git repository. So we're going to do cpan capital T dot, and this will show us our error. So our error here is a little suspicious to me. It's trying to make slash source slash dot cpan. Um, now, my initial guess is that it's trying to write to this as the home directory. Uh, I learned a little thing in that if you have a user that doesn't have a home directory, Docker defaults it, or I don't know if it's Docker or, I'm not sure which system, but it defaults it to the working directory that you start the container in. So this source happens to be our home directory here. And oddly enough, Perl is trying to write a cpan directory. Now, anytime I see a tool that writes directly to the home directory, I'm a little alarm bells are going off and I'm like, why, why are you doing this? This is what XDG is for. You're supposed to write to either .config or .local or .cache or one of those other XDG directories. So somewhere along the line, Perl is not respecting XDG. I wonder if I do echo dollar home here, what is it going to give me? Okay, source. Okay, so that's probably that's probably where it's coming from. Uh, and this is probably bash defaulting this when it starts. So it's probably not Docker, it's probably bash. I don't know. Somewhere we're getting slash source and home. Now, the thing that was surprising to me is I've actually used Perl outside of Docker, and I know that I, or at least I don't think I have this .cpan directory. Let's lsl home and grep cpan. Yeah, you'll notice I don't have a cpan directory here. So why is it picking it inside the Docker container, but it's not picking it outside? Hmm. 
And actually, where inside my home directory is that coming from? Let's try and find it. So we'll do find home-name.cpan-type D. So this is going to find a directory. Or it's going to find something that is a name that's named .cpan and is a directory. Now, there's a whole bunch of unreadable uh, Podman layers inside my home directory as well. So we're going to ignore standard error here. And this should find, oh, OK, cool, .local slash share. I happen to know this is an XDG uh, directory. This is specifically the data home directory, which is what I had tried to configure in Docker. So, OK, it's using XDG outside the container, but not inside the container. So why, why is that? The other thing that I noticed here is our error message actually has a very useful uh, file path and line number to help us start debugging here. So we can actually start opening up this file and poking at it. Now, I don't know Perl at all, so excuse my newbiness as we jump through this. And you don't need to know Perl in order to figure this out. Uh, the code is, you know, for, for Perl, it's fairly readable. <laughs> um, but let's jump to line 601, and we'll see that we're trying to, we're trying to make a directory, it looks like, unless it's already a directory. That's what this line reads to me. And this pm dir is the dir name of config pm. And I don't know what pm is, but uh, it's new config name. OK, let's figure out what new config name is and figure out why it's trying to make a directory and a config file here. Well, clearly, it's make new config. All right, so it's going to concatenate cpan home. And it looks like functions in Perl start with sub. So let's look for sub cpan home. Home dir candidate. It's not the function we're looking for, but it might be one we look for in a second. Yeah, in fact, that is the function we'll be looking at next. Uh, what does cpan home do? So for directory, for each directory, if there's a cpan config, return it. Otherwise, for each directory, if it exists, return it. Otherwise, return the first candidate. Okay. So if there's no existing directories, it's going to return the first candidate. I think this is the case that we're running into because it tries to make a directory afterwards. So. We're probably in this case here, so let's look at cpan home dir candidates and figure out what is going on there. Okay, so, oops, that's not how you scroll in nano, that's how you scroll in babby. <laughs> uh, okay, cool, so if we look at cpan home dir candidates, uh, let me scroll through this, my data. This actually sounds like what it might be called for an XDG directory, so this is probably what I want, and it's probably what's happening outside of Docker. I had to guess. Uh, otherwise, it defaults to home. Uh, OK, cool. So let's figure out if this is what's happening. So I'm going to try and open up a Perl debugger and poke at this. So let's, uh, I don't actually know how to open a Perl REPL. So we're going to do Perl REPL. This is what I did on stream, and I don't remember how to do it. So we're doing it again. <laughs> how can I start an interactive console for Perl? Yeah, I know about IRB for Ruby and Python for Python. Um, I did try Perl, but it just leaves me with this, which might might be interactive. I don't know. Perl dash de one debug the trivial program. Seems a little weird, but okay. I'm not gonna. Oh, how do I import in Perl? Because I'm pretty sure I need to do that. Uh, it looks like we use use and what was it? File home dir. Is that the one we want? I'm gonna copy this just because. Uh... I'm going to forget. <laughs> I'm going to forget how to type this. OK, so let's open up our debugger again. And we do use uh, file homder. Hmm, we get an error. Huh. I bet it's because we don't have this installed. All right, let's see if we have this installed outside of Docker. So I'm going to do dpackage-l. And usually the, the package names are similar to whatever the library name is. So I'm going to search for homder. Uh, Dpackage grab. Grab homder. Uh, we have lib file homder Perl. Let's see if we have that inside the container. Grab homder. We do not. Okay, so that's probably something that we're missing. Uh, let's try and install this and see. Well, let's actually see what this package contains first. Dpackage dash capital L. This. Yep, okay, file homder. That's probably where this comes from. Cool, let's install this. Now, I'm an unprivileged user here, so I can't actually run. Uh, in installation commands here, but if we do podman ps, I can exec into this container. Podman exec user zero 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 being root dash ti this mesh, and now we sh now we can see the root. Oops. <laughs> uh, apt update and apt install. Oh, I 
and copy pasted it. Lib file homder Perl. Okay, cool. So this will allow us to install that package into Docker or into our Docker container. Uh, yes, continue. Cool. Uh, let's rerun this Perl thing here. Use file homder. Okay, it imports now. Let's look at file homder my data. No. Uh, file homder. Oh, maybe we need to print it. Print file homder my data, maybe? Slash source. Hmm. Okay, so we've gotten further now. We've been able to import this package, but it's still reporting the wrong directory. What does it print for the home directory? Homder my home slash source. Okay, so <laughs> it's still not respecting XDG, uh, but now we have this my data at least. Uh, it's slash source in both cases, so something seems a little bit up with this homedir implementation. So let's actually look at the code for that. This is the next thing that I tried to do. Uh, D package dash capital L lib file homedir Perl. And the first thing that I noticed is that there's a bunch of different implementations for different platforms. Uh, now we probably care about Unix, so let's look at that one. See what this, uh, oops, so what have I done? <laughs> I accidentally pressed the Windows key. Uh, all right, let's look at this. And we're looking for my data to see how that's implemented. Ah, okay, suspicious. The Unix implementation just returns the home directory for my data. It doesn't seem to respect XDG at all. Uh, so let's see if we can find some implementation of this that does respect XDG. Let's take the listing of this and do xargs grep xdg. Uh, let's do x grep dash l. That way we don't get a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and ignore standard error. That's noisy. Aha, okay. So this free desktop.pm file implements that. Let's see. Let's look at the implementation of that. Uh, my data. Okay, this looks like this looks like exactly what it should be doing. If it finds the XDG data home, then it will use it. Otherwise, it'll do home.locals share. Perfect. That is exactly how something that's looking for the XDG data home should work. So why isn't this being used? All right, let's read the docs. Uh, see pod at end of file for more documentation. XDG, blah, blah, blah. The official API is the XDG user dir executable. Oh, so my guess is that this XDG user dir executable is missing, and so it doesn't use this. XDG prog. Uh, my thingy equals, <laughs> what? Uh, sub my. I think this is a uh, simple step. <laughs> How does it choose whether it gets used or not? Oh, here's some docs at the bottom. All right, so I'm just gonna go based on that guess. Oh, okay, this module can only uh, can operate only when the command xdg user dir is available in executable. Uh, so we tip we need to install a package named xdg user dirs. Okay, let's try that. apt install xdg user dirs, and it installed. Let's uh, restart our REPL here. Use file homder, print file homder my data. Aha, it now respects XDG. So in theory, we should now be able to run our cpan command, cpan dash capital T dot. Oh, and it has gotten further than last time. And so it should be able to install our packages now. Uh, so the the effective fix here was to uh, install this package and install this package. And now Perl will respect XDG. Now, I would argue that it should probably do it by default uh, if you've set the XDG environment variable, but that's, that's neither here nor there. And we'll see here, install OK. Sweet. Uh, but anyway, that's sort of the debugging route that I used to figure this out. And ultimately, I ended up landing a fix in the runner image, which uh, makes Perl available. Uh, history and fix installation of Perl based hooks. You'll see that I added lib file, homedir, Perl, and xdg user and that, and a test. <laughs>
to make sure that it continues to work in the future. Um, but anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you'd like to see, leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next one.